night hitting the road, heading out to Wapiti Lake. Got about an hour and a half drive from my house to get to the trailhead. And uh, from there, we're gonna ski in. Plan is to use a, uh, a snowmobile trail through some cut blocks that kind of parallels the hiking route, but keeps you up off the water. Um, yeah, it should pick up the, uh, the actual hiking trail at about halfway mark. And from there, we'll tour into the lake. Uh, weather is fairly poor this morning. It's, it's warm and snowy and uh, yeah, so I don't know if we'll get any views, but yeah, we'll see you on the trail. kilometers in right now. Decided to pull the polk. See if it's any easier or not. Might ditch it. It's just warm enough the snow is starting to fall up so I hope it doesn't get too much warmer. Hoping my toboggan doesn't run me over here. I can tell already that's going to be a chore with a sled behind me. Following Bruce through the cup box here. About 8k in. What a beautiful day. Stand up in here. Can't see it, but there's mountains up there. God. I'm back there. And now we route find. At the end of our cut blocks, a little kilometer of this, and we should reach the trail. <sighs> Finding the limitations of this line. My biggest fear is my tips going under a log. All right. You need me to come on clip ya? Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, so there's one. I can get that on here. There, should be good. <laughs> Imagine just starving to death because you're stuck to a tree. <laughs> Send it for Drew. So 
After a pretty substantial bushwhack, we got down to the Wapiti here. Chewed up a lot of time in the bush navigating, but it was a really nice test and, and it kind of worked out the way we wanted to. Ended up coming out just upstream of Duke Lake. The water was quite a bit more open than we were hoping. We kind of wanted to travel upriver on the on the edge of the river, but it just wasn't going to be safe to do so. So we uh, side-hilled where the hiking trail is and, uh, and just kind of put up with that for as long as we had to. Farther up here, you'll see a uh, Wapiti and Onion sign. That Onion sign is the way we took out. That appears to be what the trapper uses to get in there to his cabin. Okay, crossing Lost Marine Lake. Hoping to pick the trail up over there somewhere. I was told to absolutely stay off Feller's Lake. So, cross this one, and I think that's what the extent of my time on the water. Enjoying the views now, finally. So, right here, we're at the trapper's cabin. Uh, you'll see there's some wolf tracks there that came from a wolf that we must have scared out. Must have only been kind of minutes ahead of us the whole time, because even with that heavy snow, it, you can see its tracks nice and clear. Followed those tracks all the way around to the actual Wapiti Lake cabin that we stayed in, so that was pretty neat. I kind of took a break from the camera for a bit when we went up and around Feller's Lake. Kind of safety became the priority, so we, we put it away for a while. I got some better footage of it on the way out though. Okay, here we are, Wapiti Lake. Beautiful views. Stopped right in. So warm the skis won't slide. Beautiful times though. Ditched the sled at about kilometer 13 just before the trapper cabin. And uh, spent a bit of time route finding. Feller's Lake is wide open. We were already told not to cross it anyways, so the plan was always to go around it, but another couple kilometers and we'll be at the cabin. What a day going on. Seven and a half hours. Only about 20k distance. We're at 20 and a half now. Skis are grippy as ever. Hoping for some glide tomorrow. Once we got to the cabin, it was pretty much all business. We uh, made dinner and melted snow for our water and uh, yeah, texted our wives using the inReach and then it was pretty much straight to bed. We wanted to hit the trail, you know, at first light the next morning. So we didn't get to see the cabin in the daylight very much. So I'll have to go back. Okay, leaving Wapiti Lake Cabin. Bruce is already part way across the lake. Tried to fly the drone, but it's a no-go, and I am cold. Standing around has my hands cold, my feet cold. It's cold. It's not that cold though. the wolf tracks that we followed all the way around the lake. Forty minutes in, three point three two kilometers. Re-entering trees. 
So this next little section is pretty critical to get right. You've got to get up and around the open water on Feller's Lake, but you've also got to be really careful because the trail traverses a, a pretty steep edge. When that edge is loaded with the snow, I think it's probably wise to be pretty careful on it. You don't want to trigger a slide or drop a piece of gear down into the water. So we chose to go a little higher on it than the trail actually goes, and it gets a little flatter up there. It's a bit of extra work, but I think it's a necessary step. Bruce left his skis on. I took mine off. I think it's working out good for him. I'm worried I'm gonna drop a ski. Up above Feller's Lake. When I stayed on the tracks, it was not bad. Yeah. Once we're off of this slope, I think we'll be in better shape. So at this point on the way out, we came back to the spot we had stashed my sled, got hooked back up to it, and then we were on the way again. I was like so not excited about this part. The sled added quite a bit of challenge to the bush skiing. It was getting attached to everything behind me and and all the side hill sections it would slide off as well. It kind of reminded me of like trying to bring your toddler to the mall or something. It was just grabbing everything and I was getting stuck and slowed down at every opportunity. And to be quite honest, my backpack stayed on my back for most of the trip out. So I was just dragging a big bathtub. Water tracks down on the water. Side hill and long. We're wondering what he's doing. He's wondering what we're doing. So this onion trail sign here is uh, pointing to the escape route that we used. After looking at some maps in the cabin the night before, uh, we decided to take this way out and it led us almost exactly back to where we had started our bushwhack. This is kind of what we had hoped to take on the way in, but we didn't properly connect it and ended up with that gnarly bushwhack. The trail was really nice, like blown over sled trail. And uh, it was kind of hard to follow at times, but the skiing was really good. And I think it would have been a dream to ski down it. Would you look at that? So the temperature has increased. The skis are now just fancy walking devices and uh, yeah we are no longer skiing we are traveling with skis just like yesterday let's see let's see if I can even go downhill here oh, yeah barely oh. so on the way out it warmed up quite a bit and we ended up carrying our gear in the toboggan it was uh, it was quite the ordeal pulling a toboggan of gear through the mashed potato snow. Okay, 14k into the trip out. We've abandoned skis. They're just sticking. The sled is very sticky. 
Five hours in. I'm about 17K. Let's see. 16.7K right now. Two more K to go. You can see how much snow I'm pushing. I've never been happier to see my old hunk of junk truck on the side of the road. It has to start now. I'm free. So eventually we made our way out of there and, and got safely home. Uh, overall, the trip was amazing and uh, snow conditions aside, uh, it, it, was, it was awesome, wouldn't change a thing. Um, if you're planning a trip like this, just please make sure you go prepared, have a map and be prepared to not make it to the cabin. Uh, there's a good possibility that something will stop you midway and, and you're going to have to sleep out. So uh, yeah, be prepared and play safe. Thanks for watching.